Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm testing out a return to launch site abort with the space shuttle. This is the most difficult of the abort scenarios for the space shuttle. It involved returning to Kennedy Space Center, the shuttle landing facility, if one engine went out, so there we're turning off that one engine, and it will not activate the return to launch site sequence until the boosters separate. This launch script would continue on to the ISS's orbit normally, if not for the engine loss. It will detect the engine loss after the boosters separate and then compensate for it, but otherwise the launch script is the same. And so it will proceed to do what it needs to do to try and get back to the shuttle landing facility. Now, there is one little catch that I noticed while doing this. If it's the top engine that goes off, the shuttle tends to get rather wiggly. It's Engines don't point through the center of mass very well if it loses the top engine. And so I'll have to work on that. So I turned off one of the bottom engines and we'll see how it does with that. But that's a little bit safer, let's put it that way. So here we are at booster separation. And immediately what the shuttle does is activate the OMS engines because it needs to burn off the OMS fuel. And there's a lot of it, it takes a long time to burn it off. Otherwise, the shuttle tail will be too heavy, because all that fuel is in the tail, uh, to land safely. So we start burning that off immediately, and the shuttle starts pitching up in order to compensate for the fact that it doesn't have much thrust to weight ratio. It only has two-thirds of what it needs, and normally at booster separation, it has close to a thrust to weight ratio of one, and so it really doesn't have enough to stay aloft, and it's going to go vertical pretty quickly. Now, if it loses the third engine later in the game, uh, later, maybe closer to booster separation or even beyond that, then uh, it won't have to spend so much time essentially hovering is what it's going to do. Uh, we do have cargo in the bay, we have a space lab, so it is not empty, and we also have a docking port in front, so it's a non-trivial payload. And so here we go, we're going vertical, and it's mainly based on the vertical speed here. You can see that's still going down at the bottom right there and so we're losing our ability to go up. We don't really want to go up much more than this. Uh, we basically want to hover here, so it's gonna try to do that. And so we're now perfectly vertical, but still sort of dropping down, so we need to burn off the fuel in the external tank. In the actual RTLS abort scenario, it'd go down to basically the external tank being empty or at like 2%. We're not gonna go that low. Uh, the script does what it needs to do, and not too much more than that. If you've seen diagrams of the RTLS abort, it looks like the shuttle goes out further and then flips around and comes back, but that's not doable if you lose the engine so close to launch as we did. So it has to do this hovering if it does that. If it loses the engine later, it can go out uh, because it then has uh, less mass and already has more vertical speed to work with because it had the third engine working for a longer amount of time. And then it'll look a little bit more like the diagram, but this is the sort of worst case where it really does sort of have to hover and then here I have it uh, start flipping around at 110 kilometers and that's based on testing that's actually it's actually good that it looks so smooth here because it is flipping its entire coordinate around right it's uh, changing its heading by 180 degrees and also changing its roll orientation by 180 degrees right at the top there so in order to point back at the cape and, uh, well, I'm glad that is smooth. <laughs> and uh, here it is managing its vertical speed. It's trying to get a vertical speed that is positive. Obviously, we are currently negative. It is actually falling at the moment because it's still hev too heavy for the two engines to deal with uh, at a lower pitch angle. So it's pitching up. And then when it pitches up, it'll recover that vertical speed. And again, it's spending a lot of time hovering, trying to burn off the fuel in the external tank. And once it's got enough of that burned off, it'll finally be able to point at Cape Canaveral and Kennedy Space Center properly and adjust so that it actually ends up going back home. And so here we have enough vertical speed. And you can see in the upper left, the distance covered, that's it reading how far ahead it's going to go. And now that that's positive, now that we're going towards Kennedy Space Center, uh, it is adjusting its heading 
to make sure that its prograde vector comes around and actually hits Kennedy Space Center. You can see I activated the surface velocity there and the prograde vector is coming closer to 225. The trajectory for the International Space Station is 45 degrees, so the opposite of that is 225. That's the heading that we need to go to in order to hit Kennedy. And so we're leaning a little bit further south to bring the prograde vector around and then the shuttle will adjust back. So, and then it'll just wait until its distance covered is uh, sufficient to reach the target. It knows the target's distance, and the target being the shuttle landing facility. And I think, in general, all this would have happened a little bit lower than I'm doing it here. I might adjust that. That might make what happens later a little bit better than it turns out. I believe, uh, basically, all this would happen maybe 20 kilometers in altitude lower. And that might be safer. Then you'll see why uh, after a little while. So here we're just waiting until we get enough. There we go. And uh, it turned off the two engines that were already on, but I accidentally activated the engine that was turned off by me. So I just turned that off manually. And now it has to go to a pitch down attitude before releasing the external tank. Otherwise, if it releases the external tank on a pitch up attitude, the external tank might hit the shuttle. The external tank actually has more drag than the shuttle does uh, because it's lighter and has more surface area, but it depends on its angle of attack. If it's pointing directly at the... It might be complicated because of the shuttle's lift, but yeah. In any case, it'll tend to fall back. And here the shuttle is pitching up. And this takes a little bit of experimentation as far as exactly when to pitch up and pitch down. In our normal re-entry, we had a lot of problems where we have to decide when to pitch down because if you pitch down too late, you're, you'll stall. If you pitch down too early, you're going to have yaw, yaw problems. You're going to be out of control. And we essentially do go out of control here, but it's safe. Uh, in other words, uh, here it's uh, hit the yaw bounds, right? It's not really able to control yaw properly, but it doesn't go completely out of control because the shuttle is naturally balanced in a certain way. It's pulling more G's than the shuttle ought to, and uh, the OMS pods, I think, had a limit of like 4.5 G's or something like that. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a problem. Also, I'm not too sure that this result where we sort of allow it to go mildly out of control is, uh, is good for all trajectories, let me put it that way. So, anyway, now we're head down, and it's going to hand me control at 15 kilometers. And so there we go, the program has ended. That's all controlled by the program at th that point. And now I have to bring it back to the runway. And it's left me in a reasonably good position to do that. Uh, so RTLS abort, it's possible, uh, but we have a sort of issue right there between about 25 and 40 kilometers where we're trying to burn off enough speed so that we can pitch down safely. If we're going too fast, the vertical stabilizer, which is really rather large, it's large in order to be able to handle the yaw at high velocities, but it's not going to be able to do that at past like Mach 4. So we can only rely on the vertical stabilizer at Mach 4 or so, maybe Mach 3. It uh, depends on our angle, but anyway, but if we don't pitch down and rely on the vertical stabilizer, we may stall. So anyway, I was sufficiently happy with the situation so that I decided to try for a cockpit landing. And uh, we were coming in a little bit fast, but hey, we just did a uh, abort, so we have a little bit of adrenaline, it's fine. And I think I landed a little bit off of the center of the runway, but I was happy that it actually worked. So I, uh, I decided, decided to go with it and not be too picky. And here we are. Trying to lay it down gently, but yeah, we are going very fast. Eek. Ah, okay, there we go. And drogue shoot is out. That's what that little beep and the light is. And I actually like that indicator. That's nice that it does that. So anyway, there you have it. The shuttle returned to launch site abort. Uh, more work needs to be done. More experimentation may be necessary, but well, that's how it is right now. 
With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.